Hello! Um, I want to throw up, partially because I am incredibly hungover from last night, and partially because I have to make a video about Taylor Kniff. And if I look like shit, it's because the only makeup on my face is from last night, and I had no intention of sitting down and filming a YouTube video until Taylor Kniff tried me again. If you guys don't know who Taylor Kniff is, when MagCon was really popular back in the day, Taylor Kniff was MagCon's wild southern pony boy. Howdy y'all, I'm from Texas and I'll fuck your bitch. That was, that was Taylor Kniff. And then people like Jacob Sartorius and Cameron Dallas and bruh, it's Zach or whoever the fuck else came along and the world realized that these people are a lot better than Taylor Kniff. And he started drastically losing followers, and now he just kind of irrelevantly trudges around the internet, continuing to be incredibly problematic and so much of a narcissistic asshole, even though he is literally losing thousands of followers a day. Like in the last 30 days, he lost 658 YouTube subscribers, and that made his social blade beat up by 67% because that was losing less than normal. Like this was a good month for him, like losing 678 subscribers. Like if you look at his future projections, it predicts that in five years he will have 372,000 subscribers, whereas right now he has 411,000. Like a website is literally predicting he has less followers five years from now. Not to mention his monthly average on Instagram is losing 20,000 followers. <laughs> right now he has 3.2 million Instagram followers and in three years he is projected to have 2.6. Just saying. Just saying. But now everything I'm saying probably makes no sense to you guys. I'm just like off on a tangent because I'm fucking pissed and I've almost made this video so many times and I always talk myself out of it but today I was laying in bed and I saw something which I will get into in a moment that aided in the decision of today being the day that I tell you guys why I fucking hate Taylor Kniff. So let's get into the video. So I guess I'm gonna start with how I know Taylor and how I knew that I didn't like him right away. My first few times meeting him were just like out in LA, like at parties in LA. We would say hi to each other. He often was so drunk that he would reintroduce himself to me even though I've met him several times. And he followed me on Instagram and would slide in my DMs and like all my photos, but then I'd be like, hi, I'm Taylor. And I'm like, you were trying to vlog me on Instagram like five days ago, bro. Like, it just, it was really weird and he always just rubbed me the wrong way. He's always, he's that guy at a party with his shirt off on the counter, you know, spraying champagne on people who don't want champagne sprayed on them. He's that guy at a party that thinks every girl there wants to fuck him, even though no one there wants to fuck him. He's that guy who still calls gay people like the F slur. He's that guy who doesn't want to be around parties where there are gay people because he doesn't like them. He's that guy that will try to fuck a girl and then when the girl doesn't want to fuck him, he's like, fuck you, you're that anyway. Like, <laughs> just like the definition of like a typical conservative, I voted for Trump, I go to Texas State University and I'm homophobic and racist type of guy. I just never really liked him. Fast forward a little bit, I ended up becoming friends with Corinna. Upon the first time hanging out with Corinna, one of the first things she said to me was, I live with Taylor Kniff and like, I hate him and I'm so miserable. And so obviously, first and foremost, I was like, I am so sorry that you have to live with Taylor Kniff. Why? She basically was just like, I met him, I wasn't making a lot of money, he seemed really nice, he told me I could move in with him and pay a little less rent than him if I did a few things for him, like walk his dog, or like clean the house, or I could just do a few favors here and there for him to pay a little less rent because I didn't have the money to pay rent type of thing. And she was basically just like, he treats me like shit. And I was like, how? And she was like, you'll just have to kind of see, you know? So the first time I ever go over there, Taylor introduces himself to me. And I'm like, I've met you like 10 times. You've tried to fuck me on Instagram and Twitter like 10 times. But it's good to see you again. How are you? He's like, I'm good, whatever. He's there with his friend, literally within 20 minutes of me being there, I've heard him call like seven different people like the F slur for being gay. And I'm just like, oh. 
great, cool, you're, you're a great person, stellar, awesome. And then I just kind of start to see the way he like looks down and talks down to Corinna and like, even like talks down to me, like looks down on me, I don't know if it's because I'm a girl or if it's because I was friends with Corinna or whatever, just like, it's obvious that he's an asshole. And so Corinna and I hang out a few more times, I come over one day, her and I decide to go to Vegas. She decides she's gonna fly to Vegas with me. And while we're leaving for Vegas, Taylor's like out of town, he's not at the house, whatever, he messages Corinna about me, like replies to one of her Insta stories about me and says like, tell her I'm trying to pipe. Tell her to let me pipe. Tell her to let me pipe. Like blah, blah, blah. And so Corinna tells me, she's like, do you want to fuck him? I'm like, I'd rather fucking die. <laughs> and so she tells him that I really don't want to fuck him. And he's like, damn, like her loss. Like just let her know, like I'm trying to get at that, like whatever. And so then I like vomited for like 30 minutes and then like we moved on. I think I'm kidding, but like I literally want to throw up right now, so. So then time kind of goes on and Corinna keeps living with Taylor and like day by day he just keeps getting like worse and worse to her. He starts introducing her to people as his maid. He starts calling her his maid. Imagine being such good friends with someone that you tell them, yo, you're in a bad spot right now. I'll let you live with me and I'll pay more rent than you. Please walk my dog or do a few things for me though. Living together, getting as close as possible with someone while Corinna is doing nothing but just like being nice, being a good roommate. She doesn't party, she doesn't drink, she isn't loud, blah, blah, blah. And you taking her places or going places with her and referring to her as your maid. Like imagine having such little respect for women, people. He started telling Corinna that every time she had a guest over, she would have to approve it through him, which theoretically is fine. Like he was the person paying more rent, it was his lease, it was his house. Like if he wanted to make rules like that, he can. But then Corinna started to realize that he would always let her have her girlfriends over, but if she ever wanted guys over, especially gay guys, he would absolutely say no if they were gay and like pretty much say no if they were any kind of guy, which is insane to me, like you can't even Parade it off as like, oh, I don't want guests in my house. Like, I don't want my house to get dirty. Like, I don't want to get a noise complaint. Like, you can have seven bitches over, but like, if you want to have a gay guy over, fuck no. Like, bro, but I'm not homophobic. That's another thing about Taylor Kniff is he has had like giant homophobic scandals. He used to go live on like you now and literally be like, well, um, I just think marriage is supposed to be between a man and a woman and um, I just like, <laughs> and of course the infamous scandal where someone asked him what he liked in a girl and he was like, Big tits, big butt, nice hair, nice vagina, like what? <laughs> He's been called out for being racist and all that kind of stuff a million times. So I'm not really exposing anything new here. Taylor's very quick to be like, well that video of me saying that I don't, that I don't believe in marriage other than a man and a woman was like five years ago and now I have a Netflix show and I've changed for the better and I don't objectify women like that anymore. I respect women. I like them for their personality and their eyes while he's like trying to fuck bitches and being rude as shit to them when they don't want to fuck and being homophobic actively in 2017, which, whatever. These things are not my personal experience with him. If anything, I am telling like Corinna's story and I shouldn't be doing that. She, like those are her words, that's her story, that's her personal experience, whatever. And so it gets to the point where Corinna is literally crying every day because of living with him and how he treats her. And like she wants to move out so bad and she doesn't know where to go and he's telling her she can still stay there but she doesn't want to because he treats her like shit and blah blah blah. And then randomly up in one day, randomly as fuck, he decides to get rid of his dog Hoosier which he's like had forever and like says that he loves a lot on social media and it's just kind of because for the past like three years he hasn't taken care of Hoosier at all, Corinna has and Taylor hates the dog and like screams at it every day and like doesn't watch it at all, doesn't take care of it at all, the only person who like loves it is Corinna and so Taylor comes home one day and is like y'all I'm getting rid of the dog, I'm sending it away to Idaho or Nebraska or wherever the fuck he's from and um, Alabama, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Current is like, well, I love it. Like, can I at least have like a week to say goodbye? Like, I've been watching this dog for years. Like, I care about it. I know you don't, but like, I do. And he basically was just like, no, like, get it at shots and like, ship it the fuck away. Sorry, whatever. And so Corinna was really upset and they really like butted heads over it, which is fucking understandable as shit. Like, I don't know. And then he comes home randomly one day and is like, yo, get the fuck out. My friend's moving into your room. <laughs> well, actually, no. He was so much more of a pussy than that. He didn't tell her. She asked him like four days before, like, are you gonna kick me out because like, you don't like me anymore? 
anymore because I'm not gonna watch Hoosier anymore now like are you gonna kick me out and Taylor was like no and then like three days later Taylor's manager called Corinna and was like yo get the fuck out which imagine being so much of a shitty person and then so much of a little bitch that you can't even tell someone to their face and you can't even like kick them out yourself you have to have someone do it for you so then Corinna starts bawling her eyes out freaking out has nowhere to live is literally gonna be homeless I'm like looking at places with her that like we could live in together and stuff and like she has to like pack up all her shit in like a day it's just horrible it sucks it's a sucky situation whatever I clearly at this point don't like Taylor but him and I still don't really have any personal beef he tried to fuck me I didn't want to he was a dick about it but like he does that to like hundreds of girls weekly you know what I mean so I wasn't like angry about it like sorry you're the fucking ugly one in Macon I don't know what to say months go by Corinna moves out she hates him she openly hates him they have beef again we're online he's literally just calling her his maid and trash and saying like he made her and he made her relevant I don't hello hey have you heard of David fucking Dobrik um I pretty sure if anyone is making Corinna relevant, it would be the person who's not losing thousands of followers every day. Not that anyone even made her relevant. She's talented and funny on her own. I'm just saying. Like, the fact that he's so entitled in his head that that's what he says. Like, I made her relevant and she was my maid when Corinna was like, you're a really shitty person. Like, <laughs> what? I need a drink. All of this fucking talk is dehydrating me. Anyways, fast forward a few months, we're on tour. I bring Corinna on like seven dates of my tour as a special guest. I'm laying in my bunk on the tour bus one day and I'm scrolling through my timeline and I see a tweet of Taylor Kniff's posting a picture of this guy, I'll try to find it if I can, that is clearly not Logan Paul. <laughs> You're like, what? Like a picture of this guy who doesn't look like Logan Paul, It like isn't the best looking whatever, tweets it and says, is this Logan Paul? Or like, I found Logan Paul's Instagram. Or like, ha ha ha, like this is Logan Paul. Like, trying to make fun of Logan Paul. And, <laughs> I'm a maverick, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I just thought it was weird, I don't, like just, he was like digging at two people's appearances, like Logan's and this random guy, and it just like was weird, and so then, I decide I want to be like funny back to him and so I quote it and I say when you're bitter that people are searching Maverick more than MagCon like when you type in MA like Maverick comes up before MagCon type of thing like that was the joke completely a joke I'm sure most of you watching can concur that's obviously a joke even if you don't know me you know that would be a joke but that's the gag Taylor knows me he knows that that's a joke he knows I was joking also his tweet was a joke his tweet was also coming for someone else so why would you expect no one to like reply to it like you know what I mean I think he's gonna respond like ha 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 or not acknowledge it or whatever and he quotes my tweet and says can somebody please get this girl's racist ass out of my mentions and then blocks me on Twitter. So many things are wrong with that. You've had racist scandals, Taylor. In 2017, you are still out here like singing along to rap songs, saying words you shouldn't be saying at parties. You call all of your friends that word 24 seven and I've heard it with my own ears. But I'm not gonna sit here and be the pot calling the kettle black and like calling him out. I don't have any room to call him out. I've made my mistakes. I know I've learned. He may not know that. But the problem with that is, is if you really think that about me, why were you so nice to me? Why did you try to fuck me? Like when you were trying to pipe and you were trying to get at that, you didn't seem to mind. You didn't seem to think that I was a racist. You didn't seem to think I was a shitty person. So if you really thought that about me and you really were against those values because you thought that about me why were you so nice to me until you didn't get your way because you're a misogynistic piece of shit who's stuck in 2005 and then he just keeps favoriting like hate tweets to me and like if anyone asks about me he'll like talk shit about me and it's just weird to me because I know that Taylor knows I've seen him do and say so many fucked up things that the world doesn't know and he's gonna start a fight with me and keep going and keep pushing and keep pushing and keep pushing but I never wanted to call him out for a few reasons first of all I am so problematic I get called out for things 24 7 I have made a lot of mistakes in life I don't think that I should be the person just calling people out for shit that they do that's shitty that has nothing to do with me I don't think it's my place I've learned a lot about that I've made mistakes in the past where I thought I could call out people for doing things like I was on some kind of high horse and it was extremely 
extremely hypocritical of me and I just like don't want to do that anymore. And I also felt like the majority of the things that I had to say weren't pertaining to do with me. I think that at the time I was way more angry about all of the fucked up shit he did to Corinna and that Corinna was way too nice and didn't want to give him the clout of making like an exposing video. And so she was just like not saying anything and he was just coasting through like calling her his maid and like fucking treating her like shit. I wanted to like expose him myself. But then Corinna and I kind of both came to the conclusion where it's like, okay, like if he comes for you, if he keeps coming at you, Tana, like by all means fight fire with fire if you want to fight back if you want to say something if he's gonna try to make you look like shit to the world and you want to like come back and say something that's fine but like you don't have to come for him on my behalf on Corinna's behalf you know and so that's kind of why I always kept my mouth shut and then today I woke up laying in bed checking messy Monday with my problematic ass to see if I was on messy Monday because like I could be a little messy sometimes lo and behold I see Taylor Kniff posted an Insta story tagging us, fair game, a video of Corinna's where Corinna and I do Smasher Pass and in the Smasher Pass one of the options was Taylor Kniff and we both passed him so Corinna made her clickbait I smash Taylor Kniff question mark like cause like it was a Smasher Pass but Taylor if you watch like three minutes into the video you'll see that we both past you that I still indeed don't want to fuck you never have never will if I'm ever gonna smash you with anything Taylor it would probably be a brick and then in true narcissistic conceited misogynistic fuck boy pattern he makes the caption of the photo of us I wouldn't touch either of them with a 10 foot pole Taylor, sweetie, I don't know if you remember, but you tried. And then when I wouldn't touch you with the 10 foot pole, you were bitter. Like, it doesn't, you can't just like, is anyone following me? Like, it just looks bad. Like, if you always, like, thought I was busted and you always didn't want to fuck me, it would honestly be a really funny joke. Like, we would have been talking about fucking you and we would have passed you and you would have been like, yeah, I don't want to fuck you either, haha. -ha. But, like, you lose. Like, I don't know what to say. And so, um, now, the point of today's video. The title. You are all caught up. I'm sure you are feeling the same emotions I am feeling. I have a headache. You wanted to come for me again. Like, you woke up today, you scrolled through Corinna's videos, went way back to a video. You've already seen, you've already talked about, whatever. Clicked on it, tagged me, shaded me, made yourself look like a dumbass. All for no reason. I don't know if you wanted to lose less Instagram followers than normal, so you tried to like pick on me because it's like popular. Some people don't like me. Maybe they'll follow you. Didn't work. You're still losing followers. But I've really refrained from talking about this because it is barking up a very serious tree. It's a very serious allegation. It's a very serious thing to say. I'm not one to just like, good morning. Taylor Kniff is transphobic. Like I'm exposing him. He he like for no reason. You're pushing my buttons too many times and I I think the world should know how shitty of a fucking person you are if you want to keep coming for me and you want to keep acting like I'm a shitty person. The difference between you and I is that everything I've ever done has been aired out on the internet. Everyone's seen it. Everyone's commented on it. I've owned up to it. I've talked about it. I've grown as a person. I've moved on. But a lot of the shitty shit that you do, you hide and then you think you can comment on other people's shitty shit and pretend like you've changed even though all of the things you've been called out for, you still do. You're clearly still misogynistic. I know for a fact from the state I've heard you say that you make homophobic and racist remarks 24 7 But now we're adding transphobic to the list and I'm gonna tell you guys a really quick story And then I'm gonna go because I want to stop talking about Taylor Kniff So like I was saying earlier in the video Corinna would always ask to have people over through Taylor and one time Corinna and I were at Trevor's house and we wanted to go down to Corinna's house for like 20 minutes because they live in the same building they lived in the same building when she lived with Taylor we wanted to go down to Corinna's house for like 20 minutes for Corinna to change her clothes so that we could all go to like Chick-fil-a or veggie grill or something like that and it's me Corinna and Trevor and I don't remember word for word how all of this happened so I mean forgive me if I'm not saying verbatim exactly what they both said I'm just gonna tell you the gist of it Corinna asked Taylor's permission to have me and Trevor over because I think Taylor was home at the time. And then Taylor basically says that I can come over because this is when he was still trying to fuck me. So again, your, your 10 foot pole statement, but Trevor can't. And so then Corinna's like, why Taylor? Why can't Trevor come over? And then Taylor says, well, if you're gonna have bitches over, at least make them real girls. What? <laughs> what? Like, 
like, come again. Like, you heard that correctly. First of all, Trevor is one of my best friends and one of the nicest people I've ever met on this planet. Trevor isn't transgender. Like, he can just be a little more feminine sometimes or choose to wear makeup or whatever and that's fine. And that was the moment I knew I hated Taylor. It wasn't just like a dislike thing because knowing that you could be like that about some people or say things like that about some people or feel that way towards people who just want to be themselves and just want to be happy and blah 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 is crazy to me and Trevor has been nothing but nice to Taylor. And again it brings me back to my point that like Trevor is way too nice to sit down and make a video like about Taylor Kniff being like this to him. And same for Corinna. She's doing her own thing. She's killing it. She doesn't like want to talk about it, whatever. But that fucking sucks. And he fucking sucks. And it's crazy to me that he knows that I've literally heard him say those words about another human being. And he's going to keep pushing my buttons and coming at me. I'm not like Captain save -a I'm not perfect. I don't have any room to call someone else out for no reason. I don't have any room to say like, Taylor Kniff, you're a bad person and here's why I'm a good person. He he. I'm saying like, you're trying to come for me. But uh... It's kind of hard when uh, I know things like that and I've heard you say them all with my own ears. Like, what are, what are you gonna come back to me saying? Are you gonna say, you know, guys I fucked or you think I'm racist? Or uh, you think I'm a liar or I'm lying in this video? Or like, what is, what are you gonna say? Trevor's allowed in my house, Trevor's in my house right now. Like, I don't, if you're not one of the people unfollowing Taylor Kniff on Instagram just because he fucking sucks in general, maybe you should join the bandwagon. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Well, I'm like not kidding at all because like why would anyone support someone like that in today's day and age, today's society? So yeah, Taylor, I don't know why you keep putting my name in your mouth, but clearly you wanted a reaction out of me today. This is my reaction. I hate that I'm even remotely giving you clout. Not saying that I'm super relevant and I'm gifting you this. I mean, things speak for themselves. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I want someone to stop coming for me and putting a bunch of drama in my mentions when they're a really, really bad person. But don't worry, guys. Chasing Cameron season two is coming on Netflix. You can watch me be fake, not homophobic on Netflix. People get one feature in a Netflix show because Cameron Dallas is clearly doing some fucking charity work by hanging out with Taylor Kniff and it really gets to their head. <laughs> All right, guys, I can promise you I am never going to talk about this again. I'm never going to tweet about it again. I'm never going to fight back and forth with him because I feel like this is very much a drops mic moment. Like, you are a transphobic piece of shit, along with a lot of other things. But that's my personal experience, and that's something that a lot of people don't know. So I will be back later this week with some stalker updates, a Halloween costume video, some story times, all that kind of stuff, back on a normal, positive level. But I hope you guys enjoyed sipping some tea with me, spilling some tea with me, learning more about your favorite Vine star. <laughs> I can't stop, I'm sorry. So now you guys know when Taylor Kniff puts the bandana on his forehead, it's not to cover up his five head, it's to cover up all of the fucked up thoughts in his brain. <laughs> in his little pea brain. <laughs> I will talk to you guys in the next video. I'm gonna go throw up and go back to bed. Um, yeah.